Okay, welcome back to Block Magazine. I'm Neil, and with me today is Amy from Two Sisters and Some Yarn. So welcome, Amy. Hey, I'm so, the little sister, <laughs> as we say. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't get Denise along today, could we? She I could barely get her to sit and do our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Did she not like doing the podcast, no? No, it makes her nervous, and she doesn't like how she looks on camera, so she really just does it to appease me. <laughs> <laughs> you bully her into it, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your knitting story? How you started? Um, actually I started to crochet first. Uh -huh. Oh, there goes my husband with <laughs> power tools. <laughs> um, I started to crochet first. Mom, our mom crocheted like all growing up, but all she ever did was this big giant granny square blankets. That's it. And when you're a kid. I don't, you don't want your mom to teach a crochet. So I somehow picked it up because I was, after my kids were born, I started sewing. And it's, I'm in Louisiana. It's really hot down here a lot of the time. So I was like, why am I sitting in a sewing room? It's stinking hot. I, you know, I have to be in this room. It's not portable, you know? So if the kids were in a room, I couldn't, you know? So I was like, let me try crocheting because Denise crocheted. And so I learned to crochet. I don't know if I, I really just watched YouTube videos. She yeah. taught me some, but she's a lefty who crochets right-handed, so oh. it would have been confusing <laughs> for her to try to teach me. <laughs> so, but I started doing it more, and then I decided I want to learn to knit because I just crochet garments just don't look the same as knit. So I decided I want to learn to knit, which again I used YouTube, and ironically, a friend of mine who was a very friend of mine locally, um, who has since canceled me and dumped me and Denise out of her life. She's oh. actually taught me to knit. And I knit, she helped me knit my whole first hat, but she knit English style. And oh. I'm like, I can't do this again. Like I kept trying to do it, but when you're a crocheter first, the yarn is in your left hand. Isn't it? Yeah. Continental just makes so much more sense. So finally somebody said, well, try Continental. I was like, oh my God, it makes sense. I can do it now. <laughs> Because it's almost the same thing. I mean, I guess I started knitting. Yeah, I mean, really, it's the muscle memory is very similar. So, like, Tabitha said, she's a picker. I'm a picker. Like, I cannot throw. I don't, I don't know how y'all do it. <laughs> yeah, that's really how I, foreign to I, me. I, I have no idea how you do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so, I usually tell people when they're, they're I'm like, if you crocheted first, try continental knitting before you give up on knitting. Because yeah. your brain might be like, oh, okay, this makes sense now. So, well, I would always advise uh, people to learn continental first anyway, because I think it's a much more effective way, isn't it? And, you know, I've, most people are really faster. Fast. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen some really fast throwers, so I don't know how they do it, but I can't do it. True. Well, there's two types of throwers. There's the ones that have like a lever movement with that finger. Where yeah. Yeah. Like you, sort of one of the slow ones where I go around. <laughs> Whereas if they do it, I think they're quite quick. But I change. I'm now a Portuguese style, so I do it around my neck and do it with my thumbs. I have not tried that, but I'm I'm curious of that. But I, I like the continental because because it's it's I and I probably do it more like crochet. I use the the needle almost like I grab the yarn. I never really right. move the yarn. I move the needle. Yeah, I think. <laughs> it's hard to think isn't it what you do you have to do it to know what to do, yeah. know. it's like thinking yeah. about walking you think too much about it you can't do it anymore <laughs> so what are you working on at the moment at the moment i'm trying to finish on my whip oh, but good somebody <laughs> runs a magazine that has like patterns and so <laughs> So I have a couple of whip. I didn't bring on my whip, but I did bring your washcloth, except for the one I'm still trying to do. The black one. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> yes. And then this one took me a while to figure out what it was. No, not this one. This is the puppy. I didn't block them right anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This Hard one. Hard to see what that one is. Almost... Footprints, isn't it? Paw prints. Yeah. Yeah. And the kitty cat one took me to all the way to the end to be like oh uh, it's yeah. a cat yeah <laughs> like I was like what the hell is this? <laughs> is it Batman <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like oh it's a cat <laughs> <laughs> 
which is dumb to take me all the way to the end because this is all just stock and that i should have known but i just like i guess i needed to like oh was you waiting for some revelation like remember those 3d pictures from the 90s or you're like (laughs) (laughs) oh did you find knitting with the shawl oh the shawl yes tell me oh i decided i was going to write up a prayer shawl have pattern i have it's really super simple it's just one big giant rectangle but i've never actually written it down right. so i was like well maybe you'd want it for the magazine so and yeah, of course brilliant. i can't it's gigantic but so it's cotton blend from hobby lobby <sighs> <laughs> excuse me everyone's clutching their pearls so i figured <laughs> crochet and <gasps> and hobby lobby hard i mean <laughs> You're lowering the tone of my <laughs> magazine. I mean. <laughs> As if it could need any lower. I figured I might as well offend all the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just don't be for the two. I'm not afraid everyone. of offending, offending people. <laughs> I'm not afraid of offending people. <laughs> I am not scared of being canceled. I am like, please. When people see, I see all the drama. I'm like, guys, like, seriously. I was, in, I was on national television twice. For education advocacy you do not scare me <laughs> <laughs> like i've i've been on al jazeera america your little facebook and instagram comments don't scare me <laughs> yeah, yeah you must have had thousands with the, with the thousands of comments so, so when you I, were even, TV, I mean it was it was like 2013 2014 it was when in america in 2012 they instigated common core state standards which i don't know how uk are, but these were pretty subpar, which they weren't great to begin with. Right. <laughs> They've been steadily declining for decades. But these were, and I mean, I was a preschool teacher, I was in early childhood education, so I focused more on those ages. High school, high school probably wasn't as bad, but the younger grades were pretty terrible. And so it actually caused me to pull my kids out of school and I homeschooled them for several years. Um, mm-hmm. But I met a ton of great people and I met a ton of advocates and fairly high up people in education and we just got loud and we ended up on PBS and Al Jazeera America and YouTube so videos was, and State Capital. <laughs> I mean I know there must have been a, a few things about it that you didn't like but what was the main issue for you? The main issue for me was that they were particularly for the younger years extremely developmentally inappropriate. They were pushing skills that maybe were like fifth grade into like third grade and down 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 down. And because it's just been a constant push of, you know, kindergartners should be reading and writing and do it. No, they're still babies. And they early childhood is still age eight. And people don't get that. And their hands are not even fully developed until age seven. They shouldn't even be putting a pencil in hand to paper at that age. But so it was mostly they were just development appropriate. They pushed way too much, way too much writing and not fun reading. What do they call it? Close reading, I think they called it. No, instructional. There was a stupid word they used for it. And I can't remember what it was. No, informational text. Uh, That's what it was. Instead of a kindergartner reading normal kindergartner books, they wanted them yeah. to read these nonfiction, you know, and write an essay about it. It was, just, it, was, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And at the time, there wasn't like all the social emotional stuff you hear about now. That was all in there but nobody was paying attention to it. And no, they just called us all conspiracy theorists. Oh, that's not how it's going to be. They're not going to do that. Mm. <laughs> now I'm sitting back going, I tried to tell you. Told you. <laughs> yeah, today's conspiracy theory is we tomorrow's fact, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, <really. laughs> yeah, I think, is it in so, Scandinavia I mean, we, we, where they don't go to school until they're seven? I think it's, it's Sweden, either that or it? Finland. I can't remember. I think yeah. Finland is really actually like actually one of my friends went to Finland. One of my education friends, she was with me in all the advocacy, and we're still friends. She actually went to Finland at one point in the last like ten years. She wanted to see really what their education system and their country was really about. And was she impressed so or not? They do pay a lot of taxes. A lot of good stuff is always. Because you hear a lot of people well. And just, she was, but it wasn't as, you know, you hear like, well, in Finland, they do this. And then she's like, well, it's not really quite how it goes, but, you know, yeah. close. Better than America. <laughs> Education wise. <laughs> <laughs> I love America. <laughs> I know here, I think the, the children have an exam at seven. 
you know, and you just think to mm-hmm. put a child of seven through that is quite tough, isn't it? You know, because you know what? Oh yeah, and it's panic. it's gotten it's gotten exponentially worse because it's now you know back then it was much more writing and stuff, but it also pushed to the computers. And I mean, when I taught preschool, we had we did have a computer in the classroom, and it was one of their centers. You know, they could pick, but the kids really didn't pick it a lot. Of course, now this was pre iPhone babies. Now they're all on their tablets and they're all on their devices. And, but I mean, still to type at young age is not really appropriate. Do you think that's so, going to cause physical problems later in the hands, like arthritis or? It could. It could, but so can them sitting like this all day long. <laughs> yeah, so can <laughs> knitting. Not getting out. <laughs> they do not go outside and play like they used to. They don't go yeah. run the streets and they don't go ride bikes and they don't go make up. The kids don't get bored. And that's, you know, was one of my issues with the standards then and now is you don't give kids any free time to be bored. Not every second of every day needs to be structured, you know. Being bored is an education in itself, isn't it? You have to learn how to fill time or how to just exist, you know, without doing anything. And yeah, I've got a friend who sort of micromanages every moment of her child's life. You know, everything is filled, which must be great for him. But it's like, well, where's these moments of being bored and, you know, <laughs> having no idea what to do with himself? You know, what, what's what's yeah. going to happen when he's old? That's the thing I wonder. You know? Yeah. But, so, go, so linking back to right. knitting and education, how old do you think a child should be to start knitting? What What age? I mean, I think they could learn it at four and five I would think because you're not even though it's a fine motor skill to me it's more of a muscle thing not a bone thing I don't know I'm not a physical therapist like I could have learned at four or five but in other countries I know they learn really young yes straight from birth (laughs) (laughs) morning here's your needles get going (laughs) (laughs) so one of the other things that I know you're um very knowledgeable about is vaccines well, I think you're famous for this aren't you so I've got a few questions I don't know much about it all I know is that I refuse the last vaccines you the you know what vaccine um, right I don't yeah. And, yeah the you know what and in my life let's, I think let's do I've this had carefully to... yeah <laughs> I think we all know what we're talking about without saying it don't we um yeah so I, I, when I was a teenager, I had the tuberculosis vaccine. And I think when I was a baby, I think I may, may have had one vaccine. I mean, I'm not sure about that. But now, mm-hmm. how many vaccines does the average American child have? Um, I think the current count now, by the time they are, you know, I can't remember if it's 18 or 21, it's 69 doses. That's not 69 injections. But it's 69 doses, multiple doses sometimes in one injection. Or ah, right. so, so my joined together. never had any. So, yeah. So, like, the MMR is together. Yeah. You know, it's one dose. And one, of course, it's, one injection, three doses. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, mm. My kids actually have, didn't have, have any. So, I. Right. I'm not as like I didn't experience it going to the doctor. Do it, so. <laughs> and and did you? Um, so when you were a child, did you have any? I had them until I was about seven, but even then, that was only I think you got maybe five or six. You know, you had MMR. Um, I think that was back when they even had the real tetanus, not the mixed one they have now. Nobody got chickenpox vaccine back then. Yeah, you we were just, just expected to, to get it, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, same with measles. Um, measles and mumps, so, you were expected to just get yeah, it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I was about, I think I got all, whatever you're supposed to get till about seven, and then my mom stopped, and then my husband, he's never, well, he had one, which I'm still mad about because he got injured at work, and they gave him a teen death, and that's not tetanus, and don't get me started. But anyway, right. until then, he'd never had any. <laughs> right. So is, um, I mean, we have to be careful with this subject, don't we? Because I know some of the yeah. pharmaceutical... Yeah. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. You guys yeah. consult your physician for any decisions you would make. And we can keep saying <laughs> allegedly, my new, my new word. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> this happens. 
Yeah, so so what is your what's your main objection to the vaccinations today? Well, for me, it was I was um as I say, I was anti-vax before anti-vax was cool. Because for me it was a face, it's a face issue. Um I object to the ingredients that are in many of them. And also for me, it was just a faith issue. God gives us a body and an immune system and teaches us how to take care of it. And we go to our, you know, for, to him for healing. It's, you know, it's, if you get sick, you trust that he will take care of you. I'm not going to, you know, so a lot of people don't get that. And they're like, well, you wear a seatbelt. Well, yeah, I wear a seatbelt and I drive safely. But if I get in an accident, I'm still going to have faith that he's going to take care of me. I could still get in an accident <laughs> just because you wear a seatbelt. Yeah. So I actually was not until, I mean, I had my kids, I, we knew from the start we weren't doing it. It was not even yeah. a discussion. Doctors didn't really care as much then. They just, oh, you've been some weird religion. Okay, whatever, that's fine. They just were fine with it. Then as more and more parents started objecting because their children got injured, then it became a thing. And I actually didn't even know vaccine injury was a thing until I met other friends and they're like, oh, you don't vaccinate? I'm like, no, why? You don't either? And they explained it to me. I'm like, holy crap, I did not know that many kids got hurt and injured from it. I just thought and I was what, the weird one that didn't vaccinate. I mean, I know there's a whole range of things that can go wrong, but what what is the, the biggest issue that could happen if you have your child vaccinated? Allegedly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> according to some sources <laughs> according to some sources um and their personal experiences that they reported to me um they have children who have allergies autism sensory issues um all, just all kinds of things um and they genuinely they feel in their doctor's field that it happened due to the vaccine so but because it's such a money maker nobody can if you speak out it's your conspiracy theorists and yada 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 i mean it's there's too many reports for it to just be a coincidence and that doesn't mean that every time you go get and get one you're going to get sick absolutely not and that's what a lot of people are like well do you not want any vaccines like no i think vaccines have a valid purpose i think we should have safe vaccines i think we should have transparency we should have an understanding of our genetics and yeah. our possible conditions that could interact with them which now we know such things do exist and i believe there should be compensation there should be you know i don't think we should have to have a separate vaccine court if you get injured and that your death is capped out at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. that's not okay yeah. well that was one of my biggest I'm objections buy... to the latest one you yeah. know the, the one we can't yeah. name uh, because yeah. that was a belief that they are immune from prosecution if anything goes wrong. And I also heard that they wanted yeah. to keep everything secret for, was it 30 years or right. 70 years? And that yeah, made me that think, for here, why? Yeah, and that was the thing yeah. here. In fact, that's not even in the vaccine injury report here. It has its own separate thing that's not even set up yet. And I think y'all had, Anne was telling me something y'all had going on with the vaccine court over there, and y'all were pushing back to get compensation i didn't really follow all of that but i know with this latest one um i don't think anybody can claim compensation if anything goes wrong i think um because i've got a feeling you have to sign before you have the vaccine to basically waive your rights i don't know how legal that is though i don't uh, think anybody's yeah. actually tested that theory out yet though have they but you know when you mentioned yeah. about allergies I read something a while back, and I don't know whether this is true, and I'm, I'm assuming that you will know, but allegedly, <laughs> back in the 50s or 60s, they started to put peanut oil into some vaccinations in America, and here actually, and then all of a sudden, people started getting peanut allergies. Now, I wondered whether peanut allergies existed before to, before this. And I asked some of the older relatives that I've mm. got, and none of them ever had heard of it before. And granted, I don't know anyone with a peanut allergy, so even now, it's to me, it's quite rare. But do you know about that? Is that something you've heard of? I want to say that's correct, but I'd, I'd have to look it up and see. I do know that the yeah. peanut allergies obviously went on a rise, and, and I want to say that it was in there and they made them take it out, but I'm not 100% sure. Right. I'd have to like check that one myself. Um, but there are a lot of things in it that people can be sensitive to. And that's one of my reasons we don't is I don't eat pork. 
right. I'm not going to inject pork. So, you know, I don't believe, I don't want a board of beetle cells. I don't want monkey cells. I don't want these other things in my body. So. Yeah. The fetal cells, that's real, isn't it? That is actually true, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And people like yeah. to rationalize it and <clears throat> the Pope says, okay. And I'm like, well, I disagree. <laughs> Yeah, I, d- I mean, no, I'm not religious, as you know, and I, I'm with you <laughs> yeah. on this one, because I know, yeah. I think they say that it's a, a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone of a dead fetus, you know, the cell, but even yeah, still, yeah. It, it comes from it a fetus. Yeah. Right, and it's not, they like to say, well, it was only X amount of babies, but if you've Just, ever yeah. listened, there's a, um, there's a doctor, they call him the, the father, of the grandfather of vaccines. Dr. Stanley Plotkin, and he had to undergo a deposition. I forget why they did the deposition, but it is hours and hours and hours long. And it's on YouTube, but I mean, it is probably 20 hours long. And I can't stomach watching all of it, but I've watched enough. And he described how many babies were, and not just in vaccines, but in all of his science, mm-hmm. most of which was vaccines, and how many abortions and how many, he lost count of how many abortions he used. So I'm like, that's not just two babies. That's a lot of babies. Yeah, so, yeah, because they've got to have the cells that went yeah. wrong, haven't they? Because obviously, whatever it was they were trialing right. had to go through a whole series right. before they got the one that worked. Yeah. So, and right. is that so? When you get a vaccine, how do you know if that vaccine has got aborted cells in it? Would anybody? They nobody have... tells you, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, when you get a vaccine, you're supposed to be given what they call the vaccine insert, which is a really long piece of paper with all the side effects and all the study information, all the trials and the efficacy and all that's supposed to be in there. Nine times out of 10, nobody's ever given that. They're given a little information sheet, which is, you know, call your doctor if you have a reaction, you know, if you're allergic to eggs, you can't have this thing, you know, et cetera. Nobody's hardly ever given the insert, but on the insert, it is supposed to list them and they'll be listed, but it's not going to say aborted fetal cells. It'll say whatever. And I can't remember what they are. It's like a series of numbers and letters like MLK dash something, something, something. But it's not, it's not going to say aborted fetal cells. It's going to say the name of the, whatever they call it, but it's, you have to know what you're looking for, you know, but it's, but it's only going to be an ingredient. Now that should all be given to you. Most of the time it's not. It is on there. Well, in America, it's on the, what do you call it? The manufacturers. Right. Like if you go to Merck, da, 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 and search the vaccine, they have to list it on there. In fact, I think in the UK, they're actually even more transparent. I forgot what I was looking up one time. And the, the one that they would give in, in the UK, I want to say had either more information or had more study. Something was on it that was a little, little more transparent. And I was like, oh, okay. But how many people ask for info? <laughs> you know, it's like when you get a prescription, uh, you know, for drugs, yeah. how many people actually read what is in that? Right. I mean, I don't, I'm, I, and I'm a little bit more aware of these things, but I still don't look at everything. So we don't, no. we don't know what we're putting in ourselves, do we really? No, no, we don't. And I mean, most parents, you just assume the doctor is doing the best thing for you and if doctor is they know how to do that what they're taught in school is that vaccines save lives and they do save lives a lot but there are reasons to not get them so yeah parents don't i mean your kids you're tired it's your kids little you just the doctor knows best and unfortunately sometimes he doesn't and well i've heard stories where a baby is literally born and then the babies, you know, they take the baby away to clean it as they inject it with something, you know, with whatever the inoculation or vaccine is before it's even given back to the mother without any consultation. Is that true? Um, they can, yeah. If you don't, the, the only one they, I think the only one they give at birth is vitamin K, I think. Is that a safe one to your knowledge or? I wouldn't get it, but I think my kids did get it because I forgot to say, don't give them that. Right. Um yeah, in that moment, but, it's I mean, going to be the last thing I you think. think it has <laughs> oh, yeah. If you don't have this on your plan and on your chart, then you're at risk of, and in uh, a lot of parents, and it's unfortunate, but it happened. It happened in, in my state. There was a nurse that admitted she was, even though parents said they didn't want it, the nurse was secretly, when the baby would go to nursery, secretly giving them the vaccine. So we, I, I mean, I tell the parents, I'm like, you have to, somebody needs to be with that baby at all times. 
if they're taking the baby to the nursery, dad needs to go or you need to, and they will charge parents for rooming in sometimes. They will charge you a fee to have the baby in with you <laughs> instead of the nursery. Because that means the nurse has to come in and physically check the baby instead of the baby being in the nursery where they can check them all at once. Mm -hmm. And that varies, obviously, hospital to hospital and insurance plan to whatever. But yeah, we have had circumstances where parents have told us they found out later that the nurse gave them the vaccine they didn't want anyway. So that's that's disgraceful. Yeah, it happens. It? It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. oh. well, we there's have nothing an, you can really do about it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a because a when you go to a hospital. I was going to say, we have the, I don't know how y'all have, but we have a blank consent form. Oh. Just like it's a blanket one, like that your size, a big old long consent form and you're consenting that they'll do, you know, you basically all kinds of things, whatever basically they deem medically necessary. So like I have a friend who's um, one of my friends who's actually completely politically spectrum away from me, but we agree on consent. And she's a lobbyist and a lawyer, and she's helped me at the Capitol with stuff. And she was in labor, crossing out the consent. And <laughs> That's dedication <laughs> yes. to the cause, isn't it? <laughs> but she's a, yeah, so she's a lawyer. Most moms right. aren't going to even read it. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing, isn't it? Uh, we were saying about nobody reads the ingredients, but how many of us have read the small print on things that we sign for? I mean, that's a bigger issue. But um, yeah. Change the uh, the mood slightly. We decided to do a little game, didn't we, where we're going to <laughs> test each other on place names. So I've got a few English place names that I don't think Amy's going to know how to say. And Amy's got a few that she thinks I don't know how to say. So who wants to go first? Uh, you go since you have the right and the right. So. Okay, so this is the first place name. Okay. Oh. Hmm. I'm guessing it's not Rome with an S in front of it. No. Rome? No, too too posh, too cultured. <laughs> Rome. <laughs> no, good guess, but no. <laughs> Romy. No. Oh no. <laughs> you give up. I give up. It's Froom. So but like Froom. No you in that? I know, no double O either. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll be nice to you on the first one. So oh, was okay. I cruel with that one, was I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I would call it New Orleans. Nope. Oh. That's uh, how invaders call it. <laughs> New Orleans? It's New Orleans. Lynn. Like, oh. Just New Orleans. New Orleans. No lean. You're not, you're not leaning on it. So no, 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 do it like that, <laughs> so, no, no leans. But I'm going to trick you on the next one while you're writing. Okay. okay. So if it's New Orleans, if it's New Orleans, what yeah. is this? Oh, obviously Parish. Um, well, I want to say Orleans Parish. That's actually right. <laughs> ah, brilliant. <laughs> For okay, whatever this... reason, we say New Orleans, but Orleans Parish, I don't know why. Nobody knows why. <laughs> uh, this one's a cruel one, I'm afraid, because I didn't know this one. I didn't oh, know how to I had to look. <laughs> I had to do that, too. Baylou? Baylou. Can you hear me? Baylou. Yeah, no. Uh, Boo-loo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> give up. I give up. Beulah. So Beulah. Okay, I could. How I don't know because I, I look that. at that and think uh, Bolu is like B A <laughs> like Bo normally, isn't it? <laughs> well, Bo B A U is a big sound around here. Ah. Uh, so I thought I was. <laughs> I would have that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is probably everybody mispronounces it. I might even get it wrong myself, but oh, you now that it? Looks, I can't tell from. it looks like a Greek, okay. um, a character out of a Greek tragedy. Um, 
Is it Calipay? <laughs> no, but that's a good guess. I want to make I want to make sure I say it right too. <laughs> Calipay. It's a street in New Orleans. Ah. No, I make uh, sure I say it right. It is a Greek word. So it is a Greek word. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah. Right. I was, um, it's a Greek word. It's a, I think it's a, I think it's a goddess. Um, uh, Cali, Calliope, Calliope, Calliope. I think that's right. Calliope. Cal they Cal say it. Calliope. Cal Calliope. I just, that's, not how, that's not how we say it. I think we usually say Calliope, but. Yeah, it looks like Calliope, doesn't it? Calliope. Yeah. Okay, another cruel it's, it's one. It's a Greek word. Oh, they can't agree on how to say it either because it's apparently said a different way in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't say it. The what chance of oh, I messed myself. I messed myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Lift it up a little bit. Oh. Hmm. That's a, an M at the end, M for mother at the end. Okay. I feel like if you overthink it, you'll say it wrong. So, <laughs> Grandpa Sham. <laughs> You're just trying to say fast, aren't you? <laughs> if you say it even faster, you might get it right. Grandpa Sham. Nearly. Grandpa Sham. And just forget the M at the end. <laughs> but tr pretend the P isn't there. Oh, geez. Ramasam. Ramasam. Almost. It's ramsom. Ramsom. You just like blended all the letters together. <laughs> it's like, and I'm English. I'm supposed to, you know, we're supposed to have this language down to a T, aren't we? <laughs> we can't spell. <laughs> that looks like that should have like four syllables and you made it like two. <laughs> all right. You should know this. I think I did this. I did this one to you already, so. Oh, my God, yes. I remember you doing this book. Oh. <laughs> uh, can you move it to your left? Ah, that's better. So is it A-S on the end, is it? Or B-S? Yes. Sorry, I have terrible handwriting. Yes. Uh, Chupitulus? Chup Chupitulus. Chupitulus. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chapitulus. Chapitulus. <laughs> Chapitulus. The T is completely silent. Chapitulus. And some people leave off the S. Some people, and most, most people say just chop. They just say chop because you don't want to I say can it. see why. <laughs> <laughs> glad, glad I, I think this should be on all spelling tests of Louisiana students. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a trick one. Oh, because oh, the others weren't. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That sounds inappropriate. <laughs> okay, it's not going to be mouthful because that that's that's way too obvious. So remember, we'll we kind we'll... of cut out all our syllables and half of our letters. I know, <laughs> I know. Go oh, say it again. Mushal. <gasps> so close. So oh, it's mousel. Oh, mousel. So you're okay. very close. Heck, what is that? Is that a town? <laughs> what, mousel? <laughs> is it a town called mousel, yeah. but it looks like yeah. mousel? But okay. to be fair, if you don't live there, everybody would call it mousel because you wouldn't know. <laughs> you know. It's only if you've been there that you would know. <laughs> I think it's it's hard too because we pronounce our vowels differently. So yeah. I think that is what makes it funny too. Yeah. All right. So this one, this is a store which I believe is the family name. I think it's their last name, but it's a popular, famous store in New Orleans. Can you see it? Oh. Right. I'm gonna. I'm thinking of the drink cognac. So I'm gonna say Dorignac. Very close. Dornac. Oh. Oh, Donna. Ah, see, we, so that's one way. See, we squish, we squish everything together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And their motto is, we got that. 
<laughs> oh. Hmm. Hmm. But see, y'all, the way you say the O's, I think is what gets me. Because <laughs> my brain says tow, like you're towing a car, and that's probably not how y'all say it. In, in this case, it's correct. It is it ah. mean with tow. <laughs> it's the second bit that is okay. the tricky bit. Oh. Well, maybe we just skip the S and the T, and it's just tower. <laughs> nearly, nearly. Put the S and T back in, and what did you get? Toaster. <laughs> toaster. Yeah, toaster. I guess, I so, guess so it's, it's this bit here that you cut out. <laughs> so anything. <laughs> so this is a clue for later. If there's any <laughs> place name that has sester at the end, you pronounce it stu. Ah. So you don't yeah. pronounce the C E. So that's a bit of a clue. Uh, See if you remember. Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> y'all just y'all just putting in letters where they don't need to be letters. <laughs> I'm just making it up now. Oh, you did you this one. Remember this before. one. Okay. Obviously, this isn't right, but Do I you want remember? to say Burgundy, but it isn't. I think it's Burgundy. Correct. If it's the color, it's Burgundy. If it's the street, it's Burgundy. <laughs> Yeah, because I've noticed some, not all, but some American names, you put the emphasis on the second part rather than the first part. Here, we, we always have the emphasis on the first yeah. part. And yeah. I have no idea why. You would, I mean, it's, it's clearly named after, isn't it a, isn't it a city in France? Uh, oh, it will be, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's say? because... Burgundy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, be Burgundy. Because a lot of our streets, a lot of the streets in the city, especially off of Canal Street, one half is like French and one half is like Spanish. Uh -huh. So that's why the names will be clearly not, you know, they're inspired by other yeah. countries. Is, is it Louisiana? You're Louisiana, aren't you? Which is yeah. Very yeah. Yeah. Okay. But New Orleans was French and Spanish and Irish and Italian all mixed together. <laughs> which is where you got that very strange one. <laughs> Okay, you ready for this one? This is not okay. what you think it is. Oh, of course not. Hey, that's where Batman is from. Is that a G on the front? That's a G on the front, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it looks like so Gotham, it's, but it's not Gotham. I mean, it looks like Gotham, where Batman's from, so, but it's not. But it's not. Got him. Go to him. Yes. Go to him. Got it. I, well, I got go to him. Go to him. <laughs> <laughs> all right this one is highly debated amongst the south so ah, okay oh okay um i would say pecan but is it pecan we oh. say puck on puck on puck on other people say pecan which we say no no no, no. it's not peas in a can it's a puck on <laughs> oh. if you say that quick it sounds rude <laughs> right oh give me a second to write this one down there's a lot okay. of in this one. Oh, geez uh, not that many nine i think <laughs> oh okay that would like it'd be an insult <laughs> All right, letters blend together. Quermore. It sounds wrong. It sounds mean. <laughs> Almost. I think it's the last bit that you're not getting right there. Quernamore. Quernamore. <laughs> no, nearly. It's um, quorma. This is mean. I had to look. It's quorma. quorma. So, that sounds like something we would do. <laughs> yeah, it does actually. I, I'd never heard of this one until I started looking. <laughs> All right. This is the lake that I live off of. Ooh. Okay, I want to say Pon Chartrain without the T. Pon Chartrain? Pon Chartrain? Pon Chartrain? No, you make it. You make it no, you made it too fancy. 
<laughs> Pontchartrain. Oh, so Leave it is out actually. the R. It's Pontchartrain. Um, so like Punchertrain. 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 Kind of. Pontchartrain. Yeah. I think it's named after an Indian. I think it was like a Native American. I think. We have a lot of those names too. So. Ah. Yeah. Okay. See if you remember what I uh, the hint I gave you earlier. Uh oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Feister. Feister. Nearly. Forgot the hint. The stir Feister. right, but not the bi bit right. Sister. Yes. Sister. Ah. Yeah. Y'all in your vowels. See that's a It's how we know someone's a American. Vowel, say it's here. <laughs> okay. Y'all like, you like your vowels. There you go. Ooh, is that, <laughs> that's a French one, isn't it? I think. Is that two E's? It is, isn't it? Uh, yes, two E's at the end. Etouffee. Etouffee. Very good. It's a food. Say you got it. it. Et, you got it right. Etouffee. Etouffee. I think that's how you would say it in French, though, isn't it? It's a French name. That yeah. Is. I think that's just a dish, yeah. Okay, this is one I know you will know. <laughs> and I, but it's one that when I hear Americans say it, it always is one of them where I say, what? What are they saying? <laughs> it's a town or a city that you uh, know well in your country. Yeah, we say Birmingham, Alabama. That's how we pronounce it. So if Birmingham? you... Birmingham. So what we do, we just do the first bit and then the last bit is sort of like, we can't be bothered. So Birmingham <laughs> or Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you say Birmingham. And apparently Alabama, we say Birmingham. Yeah, they so really emphasize the, the ham, which, you know, this is the South. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got one more, so. They're like, hey, we like it. All right, let's see. I'm going to give you a, a really hard one that I had to write how to say it myself because I forgot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Something covered up. Okay. Oh, to to you to yage to yage. Nope. To yagu. Not even. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> uh, I pre I presume the J is pronounced Y or I. Um, nope. Oh, to, to <laughs> Jacks, to Jacks. It's to Jacks, that's right. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> it is a restaurant in the city. <laughs> Take it, it's French. I assume so. <laughs> okay, this one, I've yet to meet an American that can say this one. Oh, geez. My brain says Edinburgh. Say it again. Edinburgh. Perfect. Yeah. I got it all right. You got it right. Yeah. You're that's, the first my, American to get that right that I know. That's, of. My, that's my British television watching. Ah, yeah, because most, <laughs> most Americans will say Edinburgh or Edinburgh. Edinburgh, they might say. Oh, I definitely would have said that. I think I would have said Edinburgh, but I've heard it without the G. So that's right. what made me think wait, I've heard that in like <laughs> Downton Abbey or whatever. <laughs> Oh, I do have one more. How many more have you got? I think I have one more, a couple more. Okay, I've got, I've just thought. I had one, but I, I'll, let you, I'll let you, look, I had a few more, but I'll let you pick which one you want to say. All right, okay. <laughs> How about that? Um, oh, uh, okay, the beignet? Yeah. Beignet, beignet. Beignet, beignet. Uh, Chartre? Nope. That was uh, that trick when I told you about. Oh. Shard? You did that one. Uh-uh. Uh, shard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for a shard. Uh, uh, <laughs> charts. Chattre. Chatter. Chatter. Oh. Chattre. Ch uh, Charter. Chard. Oh, right. Charter. Charter. Ah. You think it would be fancy. You, you, your brain wants to make it fancy, but nope, just charter. Well, the last, the last one looks one? like Toulouse. Toulouse, yeah. To, ah, some Toulouse. people say Toulouse, some people say Toulouse. Toulouse is what most people say. 
Yeah. At least me anyway. Okay. This it's is not like I live in the city. <laughs> this is my last one. I think I might have spelt it wrong, which doesn't help. Um, <laughs> oh, that sounds like a transmitted disease or something. <laughs> um. <laughs> this is one where we practically ignore every letter in it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm thinking it's just a... Oh, on the light. That's too many left. Too many letters. Too, too many sounds. Yeah. Too many. Like your brain wants to say them all. So, <laughs> so I keep thinking like chlamydia. <laughs> so, <Shimon> delay. <laughs> Again, you're making it sound far too nice. <laughs> My chalet. Oh. <laughs> Okay, if I give you a clue, uh, use the last two letters and the first three letters and the M. So C H O M and then the L Y. Oh Chomley? Chomley. Chomley? Chomley. Chomley? Chomley. How? <laughs> Well, here's another one. This is a name. I don't think it's uh, a place. Um, well, this if I ever visit, you can't just have to point to stuff on the map. You're like, I want to go here. I'm not saying it. <laughs> well, that just totally sounds like a sexually transmitted disease when you can combine <laughs> those two. Oh, my word. I got the bad case of the Jamalai. Yeah, man. Mawarni. Mm -hmm. Boring. Mm. My warn. I, my warning. <laughs> I don't know. I'll take a few letters out. So <laughs> it sounds like yeah, man. Doc, I got a real bad case of that, man. <laughs> Mannering. Mannering. So mannering. So where the I and the W go, I don't know, but it's mannering. <laughs> you don't be shouting Man. at the same, don't you? Okay, yeah. Say, no, you don't pronounce it like that. You're both <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, somebody will comment, no, you're wrong. Both of y'all. <laughs> you going to get angry, angry Brits and angry Southern people. No, 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 that's not right. <laughs> We're getting to the last part, so All something right. else a little bit light-hearted. So I've got a few <laughs> fire questions for you. So okay. don't get right. too hard. Some of them are knitting-related, some of them aren't. So don't panic, there's nothing strange. Well, some of them might be strange, but there's nothing worrying about them. <laughs> uh, one quick question before we start. Have you watched Spider-Man movies? Not since Tobey Maguire was on <laughs> Uh, I'll still ask you the question then, because that, that's enough. <laughs> okay. Toe up or cuff down? Toe up, definitely. Yeah. Top down or bottom up? Top down. Vax or unvax? <laughs> Informed consent. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Neon or neutral? If I have to, neutral. Okay. Fingering or bulky? Fingering, right? Yes. Yeah. Yellow or orange? Neither. <laughs> it's a tricky one. I have to yellow. Yeah. I don't think either one of those colors. <laughs> <laughs> Straight or circular? Circular. Circular, yeah. Centimeters or inches? Inches. I don't know how to do metric. <laughs> Themed or seamless? Seamless. Knit or crochet? I gotta say crochet. Ah, I didn't expect <laughs> you to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Plain yeah. or boat? That's hard. Boat. Say it again. Plane, aeroplane, oh. or boat? Boat. I don't fly. Ah. <laughs> Spider-Man question. Toby Maguire or Tom Holland? 
Okay, I have watched Tom Holland as Spider-Man a little bit. So I have to say Tom Holland because he's just so much cuter. He's just adorable. How do you not love Tom Holland? <laughs> <laughs> and he's British. That's right, because he was he was Spider-Man in all the uh, Avengers. That's right. So I did watch him as Spider-Man. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Summer or winter? Winter. <laughs> I hate, I hate heat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, you're living in the Did I mention Louisiana? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it is 90 something degrees going to be today. So oh, come and live here. It's freezing all the time. <laughs> yeah. Look, the FedEx man is delivering and he is wearing shorty shorts and tank tops. I should tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just two more to go. Mohair or alpaca? Oh, alpaca. I don't like mohair. <laughs> and last one hand dyed or mass produced? Oh, <laughs> yeah, tap it, tap it all, all yarns matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to put that on one of my uh, dishcloths, don't I? I know. <laughs> and speaking of hand dyed, look what I've got. Oh, it came! Yeah. You got did to you look twice the then, didn't you? So it's oh, well, uh, yeah. Did you get the DK or the fingering? I got the fingering, and I got the two. There were two minis with it as well. Oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. The two little minis, yeah. yeah. So before you go, yeah. could you tell us the story of this? That is from the lovely Carissa of Sweet Mountain Craft. And I think she told me June was going to be the last month to buy that colorway. I think right. after that, she was going to retire it. I believe she told me, and, if, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong. But Sweet Mountain Craft, Carissa, she's in Wyoming. She does beautiful, beautiful yarn. And she had asked a couple other podcasters. She did a colorway for Tabitha after she did ours for Murder Knits. She did a couple other, like she takes your logo and makes a design, you know, inspired by your logo, she makes the colors. Mm -hmm. So Denise is always teal and I'm always purple because that's our two favorite colors. So she just inspired um, the yarn. So she did a set and then we did a make along. Did I a freeze? Bit of <laughs> There, isn't there? And a little bit. Yeah, of yeah. She's got well. she it's really pretty how she does it. I mean, she's got really good eye. And um, so we did like a little make along where people just use the yarn or Carissa's yarn or a whole list of other, you know, maybe like deplorable knitter patterns, and patterns, whatever, whoever was on our, our list of wrong thinkers. <laughs> and <laughs> and with that, so. ah, yeah, I've got the two. The two minis. So let me just crinkle for a second. <laughs> okay. Please, I think you have to show. Yeah, I really, with it, really, I really like the mini. I really almost like the mini colors better than the whole game. So just do these represent you? And Denise? So is so you're purple. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, because I haven't. I've not decided what I'm going to do yet. But I also bought um, a set of. Uh, Sweet Mountain Craft minis as well. Yeah, look, those they are pretty. all work together. Uh huh. So I'm going to do something with all of it, but I don't know what yet. So uh, yeah, her her colors are her yarn's really soft and squishy, and I think she has a lot of it. It's like all USA. You know, the yarn comes from Wyoming, and she dyes it all there. And just like Chicken Lady Fiber Art, she has a lot in the USA. So um, yeah, it says a lot of people want to buy than that. But yeah, Carissa's colors are beautiful. Yeah. So have you made anything with this yarn? I started the, I got the fingering set and I started and stopped 10,000 times trying to figure out what to make with it. So I ended up for whatever reason, deciding to make little squares and I'm going to make a granny square with it. So I've, huh? I've got, I got like a, a gray from like knit picks or whatever. And I'm just going to do a bunch of little squares and big squares and Throw them all together, and I don't know what possessed me to do that because I hate someone's work together. But <laughs> <laughs> but then I got the DK set too, her DK sock set in that, so I'm gonna make socks out of that. So yeah, because um, DK socks are the new thing, aren't they? Everybody... Yeah, man, those are so much easier. <laughs> yeah. So fast as well. So fast, so fast. And we don't. I mean, I, I mean, I obviously knit socks all the time, and obviously I knit like Tabitha was wearing her beautiful sweater. I, I, I will not be wearing anything knit until December. <laughs> yeah, for one day. For that it's one kind of funny day. that I, the one day, one day, and like I have all this yarn, 
and <laughs> I really don't wear a lot of knitwear. But that's why when I for the shawl that I'm trying to write for your magazine, I picked a cotton blend because I'm like really that's more for our weather down here. So even though it's everywhere you go, the air conditioning is blasting. So it's freezing cold in like a restaurant or, you know, so I'll always have like a cardigan to bring with me, but then you go out in the sauna. (laughs) Because here, even, I mean, we we do get some nice weather. Don't get me wrong, it's not always cold. So we usually have like maybe two weeks in the summer where it's really, really hot, Uh, but we don't have air conditioning anywhere apart from supermarkets, you know, in the big stores. Right, so right. You, you, nobody has air conditioning at home. We've only just started to get air conditioning in cars, you know, in the last sort of five, wow. ten, maybe. Um, but so you don't every, need it. Well, we only right. need it for sort of two, two, three weeks of the year at the most. Yeah. Yeah. Although it, is, seems, it does seem to be getting a little bit, you know, we're getting slightly longer summers now, but only a little bit. <laughs> hmm. I'm a winter yeah. person like you. I, I, I love snow and dark gray skies and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i guess because i've never seen real snow so i don't know if i want snow or i like not snow. seen I've never snow seen Mm-mm. no i've oh, never not in louisiana no no and we went to i've been to colorado before but when we went it was like october so you could see it on like you know the mountaintop but we didn't mm-hmm. it wasn't snowing and you know we couldn't actually get close enough to see it so it has snowed here maybe a handful of times I think I've probably my kids have probably seen it twice maybe in their life I've seen it four or five but it's still like maybe an inch and it's mostly icy (laughs) (laughs) well somebody um somebody from Poland was here when it snowed and said to me that isn't snow and I said what do you mean he said (laughs) snow's supposed to be white (laughs) because here our snow seems to be gray either gray or black I don't know how it turns that color (laughs) Yeah, so I don't, I've never, so I like cool, but I actually, I guess if you think about it, I've never, even our winters here aren't winter, you know, we never get, and it's so humid here that in our winter, it is, it is a lot, it's the wet cold, you know, it's, if people come down, people have come down and said, man, I didn't realize how cold it was down here, because it's just such a damp cold, we don't have dry winter air, it's always it's it's always moist in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do your washing, does it take ages for it to dry? Well, you have to have a dryer. You don't hang your clothes oh. to dry. Wow. I wish. I mean, we did when I was little. We would do it some, like our towels and stuff like that. But it's so humid that they get like cracky. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like it. Yeah, yeah. So we know why we use a dryer and the air conditioner all the time. The air conditioner went out. I came home last week and I walked in the door and it was like 83 degrees in the house. I'm like, why is it so hot in here? And the kids tell me, well, the air is is not working. I'm like, why didn't you call me at work and tell me? Because now it's after 5.30, so now it's after hours. And I call the people and I mean, and I call and they answer the after hour people call and they're like, well, it'll be X amount of dollars this after hours. Like, I don't care. over here now (laughs) like now like people don't realize how hot it is here and I know that people live in the desert and stuff it's really hot but the humidity is killer here yeah and I I remember hurricane come Um, I'm out (laughs) yeah (laughs) I spent a year in Australia and one side of Australia is very dry heat and the other side is very humid heat and the dry heat you you don't sweat you don't really notice it it's just really nice you know mm-hmm. it, you know it's just hot and it's nice whereas mm-hmm. in the humid oof, not not for me yeah. I don't think I've no. lasted five minutes <laughs> anyway I think yeah I mean if, to an end here we'll run that time. Yeah, no, I'll take one so, <laughs> I think we've talked for <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I can't, I can't add it up in my head but thank you very much for joining <laughs> me. it's been a pleasure thank you so thank you for having me anytime where can people find um you you can find uh me on well denise and i mostly me on instagram as two sisters and some yarn and um our youtube is the same two sisters and some yarn we're very unprofessional we don't edit we don't do show notes we don't (laughs) you get what you get and you don't throw a fit as our parents say (laughs) and um that's we're pretty simple we just like yarn and we don't care about drama and I don't care who you are who you sleep with what color you are whatever just make pretty <laughs> yarn and that's all we care about you know 
Um, but I, I want to thank you for having me. I'm very proud you're doing this because I kept oh, telling you. you, I'm like, you could read the telephone book and people would <laughs> Yeah, what's this? I've got an NHS leaflet. Shall I read this to you? Top <laughs> tips to improve your mental well-being. There are little Stop things it. we can all do. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but you yeah, are—you are like the reason why I've done take... this because you were saying you've—you've you've kept saying like from the beginning, haven't you? You need to do a, a YouTube channel. You need to do it. So if it hadn't have been for you, I probably wouldn't you be should. doing this. So everyone can blame Amy. <laughs> if you, don't like you can blame me. Fun. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine because you know what the haters are gonna hate it doesn't matter what you do so you might as well have fun and yeah. find joy and enjoy yourself because guess what they'll be they'll be hating on you whether you're happy or sad so because they're Absolutely. hateful so yeah. we could be here curing cancer hate, and someone would hateful. still have a problem <laughs> <laughs> exactly so so, so you have anyway, fun well, and do your thing I've taken up enough of your time, so thank you very much for coming <laughs> on, and hopefully we can thank do it you. again at some point. Yeah. And uh, try Definitely. keep working on Denise. Try and get Denise on. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her I don't bite. <laughs> so no, it's not you. you. She just she's just camera shy. <laughs> oh.